G'day everyone and welcome to another review. Today we'll be taking a look at the 2019 release from Powerline Models in Australia of the Victorian Railways T-Class locomotive. Now this one is sound fitted from factory and of course that makes it DCC as well. I've had this locomotive for a little over a year and a half so we're going to go through some of the sound features, the running of the locomotive, what I think of it and some prototype history and a few other bits and pieces. But before we get into that, don't forget to be subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on. So you know when I've got any reviews, model railway news, which comes out monthly, uh, compilation videos, and a few other things coming in the future. So once you've done that, we'll get into the review. The Powerline T was originally released in 2006. The first run was to include initial release of the VR and V-Line liveries on both body types, high nose and low nose, as well as West Coast Railways and Freight Australia schemes. There was a very innovative inclusion, which was a factory fitted DCC decoder, which was also switchable to DC. These were priced at $198 if you put down a $50 deposit. The second release was announced in 2008 and released in October of 2009. The second run also included a different electrical system because of reported reliability issues with the DCC chip in the first run. The chip was marketed to have increased memory capacity. These were priced at $220. And by this point, we had a lot of different road numbers and liveries as well as H-Class locomotives. As of mid-2018, the RRP on these locomotives was set at $295 for a DC model and $335 for a DCC equipped model. The DCC model came fitted with an NCE DA-SR decoder. You can actually still purchase these models. They are available from Trainworld in Melbourne and from Australian Modeler in Sydney, and they're on both their websites. In 2018, Powerline announced a smaller run of these Series 3 or low-nose T-classes. These had been upgraded and modified with an MTC 21 pin socket and speaker fitted, making the loco, DCC and sound ready, as well as the sound fitted models were fitted with an ESU V5 loc sound decoder with DCC sounds files installed. These also come with a five pole can motor, twin flywheels, metal knuckle couplers and RP25 black and metal wheels. These retail for $335 for a DC model and $435 for a DCC and sound equipped model. These models come in four numbers, T370, T371, T381 and T383, all in Victorian Railways livery. I first got to see one of these run in October of 2019 at the Sunbury Model Railway Exhibition. They were then later available to the public in November that year. I picked mine up from Trainworld in Brighton in December 2019. So I've had it about a year and a half. Now before we get into my two cents, here's a little brief history of the locomotives. These are the third series of T-classes, also known as low noses. Being quite distinct from the first two being a flat top, then a high top model. 20 of these Bobo diesel electric locomotives were introduced in 1964 and built at Clyde Engineering in Granville, Sydney for the Victorian Railways. These locomotives have seen service on both broad and standard gauges in most parts of Australia in a variety of jobs, from shunting locos, freight, and of course the occasional passenger work. Although six of these units have been scrapped, eight of these T's are still in service after 56 years, with two preserved with heritage groups, two on static display, and two in storage. So, here are my thoughts. After all this time, it looks good. It has fitted metal handrails that don't fall off. It has enough detail. The color looks absolutely fine to me and it doesn't have a cheap feel to it. It doesn't however have a crew in the cab, nor many cab details, which is a shame as the windows are open on this model. So it's very apparent there's no real detail in there when viewed close up. 
aside from a couple of bits of molded plastic to represent the controls. It's well weighted with a metal fuel tank and in terms of weight, it can pull a fair rake of wagons up and down grades and at a crawl speed. I mean, I've run it at exhibitions for a full day without any issues. It even comes well packaged in this box with a soft foam insert. Now, I've got a DCC and sound equip model, so let's take a listen to some of the sound features. Now, I say it'll run all day with no real issues except for one. It stops and starts. When it's cold out of the box, like a cold start, it struggles to maintain power. It struggles to stay on. Uh, no matter if I run it on the club layout, if I run it on an exhibition layout, if I run it on a test track, my little switching layout that's getting built, um, or even on the rolling road, it, it doesn't like to work straight away. I have to put it on the rolling road for about five minutes in each direction. And then once it's, it's warmed up, it runs very well. It's the only model I have, which I have this issue with. I have some of the older T-classes, which have got the old switch DCC, DC switch in them. I can plonk them on the track and they will run. Um, it's not the most sensitive decoder as far as I'm aware, but they will run and there's no issue. Whereas this, which is considerably more expensive, doesn't, doesn't like to just work. Now, I've had a few people tell me that it's the grease that's inside it, or that they use on the motors and things like that. I haven't changed it. Maybe if I do that, it will. But I feel for a $435 model, I shouldn't have to straight away or anything like that. It should just be right to go. I am also not the only person I know with this gripe or issue. And I guess because of this, I haven't bought another one. I think that it probably also should have come with a keep alive in it. I know it's not like the shortest wheelbase locomotive, say like the W classes or anything, but it's also not the longest or yeah, not the longest. I know it's got pickups in all wheels, 
but I think a keep alive would have been worth it for them to have put it in this. Maybe that would have also solved the problem of its bad startup. Maybe. So these were released a year and a half ago and there is still only four road numbers available in just the Victorian Railways liveries. And it doesn't look like there's any plans for any other liveries or any other road numbers. Now, Powerline a while ago did say that you can take the old bodies and put them on the new mechanism. However, you can't just buy new mechs for your old ones. I think that's, I don't know, like it would have been neat if you could buy just the mech and put it in your old ones and give them a new bit of life. If you've got, I've got like a really old uh, high nose. Apparently they fit in them too. Uh, the motor in that seized. It would have been cool to get that running again without too much effort, but not to be. However, somebody else is going to release a T-Class and for a little bit less as well. So SDS announced that they will be releasing T-Class locomotives in both high and low cab, well, low nose uh, models coming Apparently later this year, we did see some pre-production samples at Diamond Creek, which I mentioned in my Model Railway News videos. Uh, they are currently $285 for a DC model and $365 for a DCC and sound equipped. Now keep in mind that is a pre-order price. They will go up a little bit once they are released to $295 and $415 respectively. It doesn't say on their website, but I'm hoping they put a keep alive in them. I think it should just be a standard feature now. After IDR released the W class, which is still probably one of my favorite purchases I have made. Uh, it is a locomotive that I've been using quite a lot lately if you follow me on Instagram. Um, I, I think they should, hopefully, they should come with a, with a keep alive. Sorry to keep harping on about it, but I think it's an important thing. Now, SDS still have order forms for the V-Line and the VR models on their website and they have a listing for the T-classes which are owned by private operators, but still no order form on there, at least at the time of filming this. On that, and I guess this is solely my opinion, and it, I, it's also me just having a bit of a whinge, I don't understand why there aren't pre-order forms online, like there are for other products. I should just be able to go pay now, buy it online, get an automatic receipt because I've noticed chasing receipts uh, for pre-orders is a bit of an ordeal. Now, I'm not saying SDS do this, but another company do and make it somewhat difficult to get confirmation that you've got a pre-order on hold. The money will come out of your bank account, um, but you don't get a receipt saying, hey, you've got a, got a pre-order. And I'm not the only person this has happened to. I'm not gonna name that company, but it's a pretty easy guess which one it is. It is one of the bigger manufacturers. I just don't understand why it's not an automated online thing. Um, anyway, I digress. Never mind. If this is frustrating for you to let me know about it. Now, in terms of websites, um, Powerline's website is still down. Uh, it has been down for some time and they occasionally post on Facebook. SDS look like they also need to update theirs. If you are interested in getting one of their models, there are order forms that you can download, then you can either email them or you can send in a postal order form. Also, Powerline do have a new locomotive on the way, very similar to the T-Class in how they're releasing it. It's the New South Wales Railways 48 class in Candy. Four road numbers for about the same price. Uh, I will probably get one, maybe. Should I get one? If you think I should, let me know. Anyway, with all of that aside, I actually quite like my T-Class, um, just to go back a little bit. It sounds good, it, it actually sounds really good, that um, decoder and the sound files, I think they're tip top. Uh, and the build quality is, is quite good. It is a solid, well-built model. I guess we'll see what SDS's is like. Now, what do you think of the T-Class locomotive? Do you have one, or do you have an older Oztrains one, an Ascision one, or are you super lucky and you've got a PSM one? And for those who don't know PSM precision, precision scale models, they released brass ones back in, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, in the 90s. And then of course, maybe you're waiting for the SDS version. So let me know in the comments if you've got any opinions on that. And of course, if you've got any feedback about this or other videos that I've got. On that, don't forget to have subscribed 
because I've always got new videos coming out, especially Model Railway News, which comes out on the first of the month now, which is then backed up by my compilation video of all the trains that I see throughout the month. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, be sure to, yeah, subscribe, have notifications turned on, you know what to do, and I'll be back in a video soon. Hooroo.